Today we're talking about outside the waistband specifically. It, uh, I call it the two second presentation, which sounds absolutely horrible because who wants to be presenting in two seconds? I mean, unless you're presenting the 50 yards, your first shot may break at two seconds, <laughs> something like that. But <clears throat> there's no real reason to do a two second presentation. So that's not really what it means. I am giving myself three beeps. Uh, the initial beep, which is the starting, I have a one second uh, beep and then I have a two second beep. So on each one of those, we're going to build up this presentation to have a very consistent presentation with checkpoints or uh, milestones along the way uh, as the gun is coming forward towards the target. Um, so I call it a two second presentation. Again, I start with just the part time uh, or just the beep, which is a start time. Then I go to part time at one second and then I add a part time at two seconds. Now, if, again, for me, the best tool available to date is the AMG Dush Lab Commander Timer. Um, it is a long, stinking wait. I think it's like four months or something. It's ridiculous. If you think about it, you will never order it. <laughs> like me, I, re I like resisted for a couple of months once I learned that this was like an awesome tool. I was like, ah, oh, I can't get it right away, so I would just kind of put it off. It's like this weird mental thing. Just order it now and forget that you ordered it. And when it gets there, you'll be, you know, you'll be happy that you got it. Not surprised. You'll be happy that you got it. So um, I am, I am set up at about a seven yard ish distance from a target that's like slightly to the your left, I guess, my right. And I am going to just on the first beep get my hands on the gun. My hand's gonna go on the gun. Second hand is gonna go to where I want to be in order to meet the gun sooner so that I can present it to the gun as aggressively and stable as possible. All right, so the first one is just moving both hands to the gun. We've probably done a micro drill. I'm pretty sure we've done a micro drill where you just react to the, to the beep and then you pull the gun all the way out uh, on the second one. This has a checkpoint. The reason for the checkpoint in the middle is because I have found over my development time that I don't sometimes focus on getting my index finger to the middle finger of the dominant hand. Index of support hand to the middle finger of the dominant hand. I kind of take it for granted and I sometimes will whiff uh, one way or the other or I kind of throw my hand out a little bit later than it should. So if I can present the gun to where I'm meeting here, now I have all this room before the gun presents to the target to correct anything, adjust anything, uh, crush the gun sooner so that the gun arrives a little bit more softly and more predictably on the target. When I throw my gun out and catch up out here, not only do I not have all that correction time, it might be a tenth of a second, but that's a ton of time, two tenths of a second, whatever that is, but also not only do I have that correction, you have a grip module on this very program, I think it's like, I don't know, number three or something like that. Very early in the program, so make sure you're going from the, from the from the top down on the on this program. Start at the beginning and kind of come all the way through. Don't binge watch stuff. Practice along. Make yourself notes on things that are helping you, and go back and rewatch as necessary. But I digress. Again, this will get you to focus on that point. Other, so this is the first thing to focus on. Second thing to focus on, and then obviously bring your gun up to a very specific part of the target will be your third step. So. Let's start with just the part time, uh, just the start time. I am trying to move as aggressively as possible to where I want to be, and I want to start creating that fold, remember, that we've talked about before in the grip. And I want to get my hand as close to the gun as possible, without obviously impeding the motion, so that I can then later get index the middle finger as I present the gun forward. All right? All right. So here we go, just the first one. Stand by. And if I feel like I wasn't quite there and I need to adjust, I will adjust. I will get my hand to where I think is really, really nice, feels really perfect, and I'll put it back. I want to not waste any upper, even if it's not the most perfect grab of the gun, fix it before you're finished, and then do it again. Stand by. Oh, I felt so much better. I'm gonna do that for a little while. Notice I am not staring at my gun when I'm presenting. That's a bad habit. I'm gonna stare at where I want to be, wherever the problem is with the first thing that I need to address. If the first thing I'm gonna do from here is shoot, I'm gonna look at the, that very particular part of the target. First thing I'm gonna do is move to a spot. I'm gonna look at the, the spot where I'm trying to move to. If the first thing I need to do is reload or whatever, like let's say it's an unloaded start, something like this, I might look down because I, I want to make sure I get what I need, then shift my vision to the magwell 
then either look at a target or a spot I'm going to. You're always looking at what is the next thing that you need to do, whatever it is, the next problem is, all right? So just as a habit, I am not looking at my gun. I'm looking at the target, the gun is loaded. If the gun is not loaded, I can't shoot anyway, so I need to be looking at my workspace here to make sure that I can load it properly, all right? Stand by. So now I'm getting like every single one of these to feel better and better. And I'm diving into the gun. Now I don't need to go all the way up here, right? I need to go just a little bit above the gun so that I can slam into it and start thinking about driving it towards the chart. Stand back. Yeah, I need to adjust it. I felt like it was a little bit too high. I felt like I was a little bit farther back. So I'm gonna adjust this so that I can get that nice tight grip on the beaver tail. One more time. Nice, I'm gonna do one more. Ooh. I felt like I jumped it a bunch, so I'm gonna do it again. Nice. So remember, my hand is moving. It goes from below the belt, right? Because usually for most competitions and things, in order to get everybody to start at a similar spot, they'll say wrist below belt. This is wrist below belt. Now it's the very minimum, this wrist below belt, but indeed there's my belt, my wrist is below the belt, my wrist is below the belt resting, like indexing on the gun, and they're just moving just a little bit up. If I leave this down and I come out, then I have to travel farther. But if I leave it here, I only have to go forward just a little bit and then get the rest of my grip that I want. All right, so how long should you do this? However long you can invest in getting a better purchase on the gun as quickly as possible. I don't really slow down my hand speed if I have a timer involved. If there's time involved, then I need to move as quickly as I possibly physically can. Now, if I just wanna get some repetitions where I get a nice grip, I do it like that, okay, cool. Go to the same place, same place, same place. Not a lot of speed, but I am doing the very deliberate motion. Then don't, don't have a timer. Get some deliberate ones, especially if you start getting tension in your shoulders and you start fumbling or messing up. Take the timer out, get a couple deliberate even if you want to get a little bit more, more careful, more careful, more careful, then you start increasing speed, increasing speed, and you add the timer. And then you get the same thing that you, that you want, really, really nice there, okay? Then I'm gonna add a part-time. I'm gonna go one second. Cool, so from there. To